Ibus is the mother, the mother of the society uh, and was primarily based to increase the um, importance of ultrasound in breast imaging. Today we have not a bubble, but today we have Ebus as a totally multimodal society. And as you can recognize based on our talks, we are just covering everything. And now it's my turn to cover MRI. And as you see, uh, again, there's a disclosure about uh, the dense breast info. And we go on with my outline some international guidelines, abbreviated MRI, women at increased risk, a special uh, focus on lobular cancer and the future horizons. And I start with the international guidelines and this very nice um, study of USOBI. USOBI analyzed uh, the uh, frequency of indications. And as you can see, the most uh, important uh, topic in our talk, personalized screening, uh, is not so, um, not so frequently, but screening and high risk is really important in all of these centers. Uh, you will find included Greece with some centers, but not Germany. Why? Because the official indication in Germany are very limited. It's just the uh, surveillance uh, in in inconsistencies of the breast conservative therapy first and it's unknown primary second, that's all. So all of my images are nearly from private patients or after um, surveillance uh, images. But it's easy to find a cancer. This is what my colleague uh, Christiane Kuhl always says. Just look at it, at these MIPS and you see it's lightning and this indeed was a cancer a small NOS in this uh, lady at increased familiar risk. So in our breast um, center, we also have a lot of patients with increased risk. What are the current indications? And I'm focusing at the ACR recommendations. Uh, first and most important indications are high-risk patients with a risk of 20% or higher per lifetime of breast cancer. The intermediate risk patients with a risk between 15 and 20 percent are regularly uh, examined by MRI in US and some other countries and uh, bilateral MRI is recommended uh, in many countries for newly diagnosed breast malignancies because you will find contralateral cancers in a frequency between 3 and 5 percent and maybe also patients with breast augmentation but to be very clear, there is currently no direct evidence that MRI reduces mortality. This is not astonishing because the concept of breast conserving therapy was based just on mammography and radiation. It's the same like mastectomy. So it's difficult for every other modality to be better <laughs> if it's uh, the same like mastectomy. So, Current indications also focus on invasive cancers and DCIS uh, to find occult ipsilateral disease, which is the case in up to average 15%, and occult contralateral disease up to average 4%. The invasion deep to the fascia, post lumbectomy with positive margins, very important, and uh, the surveillance after new adjuvant chemotherapy. And this is one of our three Tesla imaging, whenever I can, I use of our several MRI systems, the three Tesla system for MRI. And you see very highly resoluted, this typical ductal enhancement. And this is very characteristic for DCIS and demasking and characterizing DCS two years after BCT. Um, MRI at 3 Tesla is probably the best method. On the other hand of the spectrum, other side of the spectrum, you see such patients, a triple negative cancer with a lot of lymph nodes along the chest wall. We follow this patient now since several years and with many, many therapy, therapies it's more or less stable. Uh, but. We were a little bit concerned about this uh, enormous chest wall uh, recurrence. 
then there are additional evaluations of clinical and imaging findings by MRI, and this is the recurrence of breast cancer, metastatic cancer when the primary cancer is unknown, and the lesion characterization in rare cases such as asymmetries or blood enable discharge when biopsy does not find any target, you directly can make the diagnosis based on ultrasound or a mammography guided uh, stereotactic biopsy. Further, post-operative tissue reconstructions and the differential um, against the fat necrosis that can look very similar sometimes. MR-guided biopsies are prerequisite. What do you see? Just an asymmetry. This was a newly developable newly developing asymmetry just seen in one plane. An MRI was necessary because we did not find it by extended mammography examinations by ultrasound because there was also scarring in the area uh, front of this lesion. But knowing where to look at, it was easy to use advanced ultrasound techniques and to make a biopsy of this hard area. And it turned out that this was a multifocal lobular invasive cancer slower than or um, no, lower in diameter than eight millimeters and additional CLIS. Screening of the channel population. This is really a, another consideration, but MRI currently is not recommended for asymptomatic average risk women. Here we have a typical cancer uh, patient in recurrence uh, in um, surveillance and the question was is this a recurrence or not and the scar was nearly identical however we have the feeling maybe it's one or two millimeters bigger in mammography and then you go to MRI and then it's very easy you not only see the big recurrence within the scar you also see these foci and these foci are in the same segment and now second look ultrasound comes at stage and you see here these little cystic lesions that correspond to these foci. Now it's easy to make a biopsy and this lady is very well after a second surgical approach. She lost this segment. False positives are another important consideration. As with mammography or any other test, these results are sometimes false positive. You have to expect that an MRI direct biopsy results are similar more or less to those of mammography. This is an interesting case and uh, we see uh, T2 is negative in this case. She has lost one breast. Uh, this is a prosthesis. The DVA and ADC, which is diffusion weighted images, apparent diffusion coefficient images, show no real uh, restriction, but there was a slight enhancement and it looks star like. And we have it here also in the second plane. And very, very subtle finding, but this was a correspondence in ultrasound and. Uh, Mammography was difficult to assess whether or not this was a correspondence. So we made a biopsy and it's a hard area. We found the histology of fibroadenoma, Lynn, radial scars. So this is a happy outcome for this lady uh, during surveillance. Other considerations, focusing also on treatment planning. But much caution should be exercised in altering any management. You have decided preoperatively based on MRI findings only without biopsy confirmation and additional biopsy and the correlation with other clinical and imaging information should be used always together with your clinical overall judgment. Another case, do not see much on mammography, but this left hand side contains this big finding and you can see how differently you can measure the extension of this finding which finally is a multifocal lobular cancer and there are some of the extensions of foci you will not see by sonography 
uh, not even by mammography. So this is a lobular multicentric invasive cancer. And here we see two of these invasive lobular foci and with this calcification within the basal membrane of the extended TDLUs, you see casting calcifications. What is an inappropriate use of breast MRI? Um, it is inappropriate if you use MRI uh, instead of careful problem solving by mammographic views or ultrasound in a diagnostic setting. Further, it shouldn't be not used as a substitute for a screening mammography because you will miss calcifications and it should not be used instead of a biopsy of a suspicious finding identified by mammography, ultrasound or clinical examination. This for me is relatively, if you're very familiar with MRI, in special situations you can make MRI for decision makers. That's my feeling, but I show you the ACR guidelines. What do you see here? Maybe here, an asymmetry, maybe yes. The lady has carings on the right hand side, but this finding on the left hand side, this was a mastopathic nodule. And what I found in ultrasound is a first cancer, a lobular cancer, a second lobular cancer, they all are stiff, and MRI just shows us very tiny foci. Usually, uh, focus is defined by a diameter of five millimeters, and you would not usually diagnose a cancer uh, smaller than five millimeters. In this case, with MRI at three Tesla, you see subtle irregularities. So this was corresponding. There were no other cancers, and this is the mathopathic nodule. So 3 Tesla is really a good standard also for small additions. What about abbreviated or fast MRI protocol? We have recently preliminary studies that have reported a shortened and abbreviated MRI protocol to have similar sensitivities and specificities compared to full MRI protocols. To my opinion, and I'm doing MRI since early 90s, to my opinion, this is definitely not true for lobular cancer, but for quite a lot of the invasive cancers. And these techniques could make contrast-enhanced MRI more cost-effective as a screening tool. Let's look at this mammography. You see cystic changes on both sides. Very difficult to find a cancer in such a dense breast. But MRI is able to show us this, this enhancing area uh, yellow means it's a plateau curve in our system, and this is a corresponding um, corresponding ultrasound finding. And to be honest, I recognize such findings also if there are a lot of cysts in the environment. It's hypervascularite and biased. It's dense, and it's uh, 1.2 centimeters, which is quite a big size for our ultrasound diagnosis. What are the contraindications? Pacemakers, most of them, ferromagnetic material. No, you know about this. And all patients should be thoroughly screened for any India for contraindications before uh, they are examined by MRI. These are some typical sequences for our uh, three Tesla machine, but I don't go into details. However, I really like also to have T2 weighted images because T2 weighted image um, with a low signal is one of the typical cancer appearances. And uh, sometimes um, to know that there is not a cyst, if there is uh, annual enhancement, can be very uh, helpful. What are the technical guidelines? Three millimeters thickness of slices or less in pixel res resolution one millimeter. The scan time should be four minutes or less after pre-contrast images, and you need a good temporal resolution. And the standard dose of gadolinium, and we only use macrocyclic gadolinium since years, is 0.1 millimole per, uh, per kilogram gadolinium, followed by a flush, and the standard MRI is today 1.5. Uh, my experience with three Tesla are very good. 
for me it's a standard of tomorrow, but this is a 1.5 uh, MRI and you see here this is enhancing lesion with necrosis, it's a cancer. And this is a, a 16 channel coil with multiple source radiofrequency transmissions. Let's focus on women at increased risk. And uh, if you look in meta-analysis, we see that there are some studies or one which is uh, very similar looking at the results like ultrasound or TOMO studies, but uh, there are others that give much better results from Wendeberg and from Christiane Kuhl from Germany. And uh, if we look here at such an image, easy diagnosis, what is it? Oh, it's old, but little irregularities. This is a cancer if you see such a washout curve, but you need to collate. Red stands for washout curve, and now you're if you are looking at this lesion, you're a little bit concerned because it's very bright in term, which is a T2-weighted image, and um, also it uh, just enhances. There is no restriction. So my recommendation is don't take too much attention on these DVI images if it's really enhancing with such a curve. It was a cancer. It was a cancer. Next to it was a cyst, and I will show you the ultrasound findings later. But first, let us look screening women at higher risk than average. What is the recommendation? In those with genetics based increased risk and their untested first degree relatives, annual MRI beginning at the age of 25 or 30. If there's a calculated lifetime risk of 20% of more or a history of just a mandel radiation at a young age, annual digital mammography with or without DVT also starting at the age of 30. And persons with a history of breast cancer and dense tissue, increased risk in addition, and personal history of breast cancer before the age of 50. This starts a little bit later and annual surveillance is recommended in USA. There are other indications like uh, A2PS at biopsy, uh, if there are additional risk factors present, and those with a high genetic risk like the Ashkenazi Jewish descendants and particular also black women, they are at risk. Imagine if all the black women in USA would be screened by MRI. That's a big amount of money. <laughs> Here we have our case with the two lesions, one by the other. Both show no restriction. This is a cancer. This is a cyst. This is hard. This shows an artifact. This is hypervascularized. So if you know where to look at, it's very easy to find it. And second look, MRI. Uh, second look ultrasound of MRI only lesions is positive in nearly up to 80%. This was an NOSG2. Let's look at the meta analysis of breast MRI in high risk screening. And this means BRCA mutations with a risk of more than 20% lifetime. Uh, the risk as uh, a diagnostic performance clearly shows that the sensitivity is better for MRI than for mammography, but even better combining both methods because MRI sometimes does not depict the DCIS and the microcalcifications of DCIS. The specificity is better of mammography and it goes down if you combine these two methods. The biopsy rate is very variable between 3 and 33%. And the additional gain of mammography in BRCA1 patients was just 4%. In BRCA2 it's a little bit better, let's say 13%. This is not so much, so no question, the first choice is MRI. There's a limited gain by mammography. And to be honest, in those collectives there has been no gain by ultrasound at all. All the lesions that had been detected by MRI. Some of them were seen by ultrasound, others not. And there's a quite high biopsy rate in these ladies with BRCA mutations. 
In Germany, we are going to switch our recommendations after a big study uh, on these ladies um, with high risk and only in those with the proven BRCA mutation, which just start in the age of 25. We do annual MRI. Uh, mammography starts with 40, an ultrasound and a palpation are still in this system to detect intervals and uh, it starts also with 25. There is a different risk for those who have no proven BRCA mutation um, and only a calculated risk. In those, we start with 30. Mammography again starts with 40 and ultrasound starts with 30. If the relative risk is um, over, is only 1.5 in those over 50 years old. This is a new uh, insight we had. Look at this lesion. What do you think? Benign, malignant? Oh, it looks quite malignant because it was the only lesion that was enhancing. And this is a corresponding T2 low signal. You know, this is suspicious, a plateau curve. And here the corresponding ultrasound. <coughs> it shows you <coughs> it shows you an architectural distortion, the biopsy. And mammography does not give us so much additional information again in this case. But what do we see here? It's a hematoxylin eosin staining. E. Catherine, do you know what is E. Catherine good for? It's just the staining of the junctions between the cells. So it means if these junctions are in place, it's a ductal orange, and if it's lost, it's a lobular orange. And so this is positive. And you see here uh, TDLUs with necrosis, with calcifications, a typical DCIS. More about abbreviated MRI. And uh, it was my colleague Uwe Fischer who first recommended this approach. Christiane Kuhl added her recommendation and published it in a, in a very good journal. And if you look at the breast cancer detection rates, here's a very small cancer of Christiane, you see the detection rates are excellently. 18, 15, 36, can't believe it, 9% in a very dense 16%, 13%, 15%, 15%. So the mean is 12.3. Uh, very good results. If we... Look at this case. What do you see? Harmless looking parenchymal structure next to a cyst, but it's enhancing very strongly. But this green means it's just a continuous enhancement. These are the quite innocent mammographic correspondences, and this is ultrasound. If there's the only enhancing area in the breast, and you have such findings in 3D, hypervascularized, irregularity lesion. Just make a biopsy, and what do you see? It's a small NOS. So MRI is good in detecting small NOS, but you can detect it also by ultrasound. And uh, what are the results of breast MRI in the extremely dense breast? We have preliminary communications from the dense trial that just um, takes a population-based approach uh, using MRI in extremely dense prints, and here we have the results. More than 4,000 examinations, a recall rate of approximately 10%, a biopsy rate of approximately 6%, and the outcome is a detection rate of 16.5 uh, per thousand, which means 1.6%. Um, and if you look at the interval cancer rate, Mammography and MRI, it's 0.8 per thousand, and the interval rate of mammography alone is much poorer, 5%. By the way, do you remember the interval rate of this big uh, Japanese study? It was 0.5, by the way. And here we see the delta interval rate. It's 4.2 per thousand examinations. So the statement is very clear. Mammography 
lose a lot of cancers. And to uh, summarize the contrast enhanced breast MRI, reveals 16.5 per thousand additional cancers per thousand women with negative mammography compared to 6.8 per thousand in the Dutch biannual mammography screening program. So nearly a doubling. Not bad. This is a very extremely dense breast. What do you see? Which side is pathological? Maybe the left-hand side? No, this is the high, not the left-hand side. I'm going to show you the uh, solution later. Let's look here at the supplemental breast MRI in women with average risk of breast cancer. There's only one study, the study of Christiane Kuhl. She found no interval cancers at all. The prevalence cancer detection was 23%. The incidence uh, detection rate, not percent, per thousand, and uh, seven per thousand. So good results. And the median size was eight millimeter, which is excellently for invasive, and 50 millimeter for non-invasive DCIS. But the major point she emphasized was these cancers are biologically relevant and they had a note negativity in more than 90%, high-grade cancers in more than 40% and high-grade uh, cancers. This were the prevalence screens in the incidence screens of uh, 46%. So a very good study. However, to have no interval cancer at all is somehow strange because definitely some of these cancers develop and so maybe there's a little problem with the study design but she's a good friend and I will not uh, discuss this too intensely. Another case, you see two lesions in this lady, one at 12 o'clock, another at 6 o'clock. Both are just enhancing very strongly and both have a, a high signal in term. Both correspond to this extremely dense breast I showed you before. Now let's look at DVA. There is a restriction, means high signal in the diffusion weighted it, and low signal in the ADC values, and no restriction at six o'clock. And term is again bright in both. So what's the diagnosis? This is a high-grade NOS, and this is a desmid type fibromatosis. And uh, maybe you don't know better catenine, but it's a marker for mesenchymal structures. Some indications of breast MRI. Personalized screening with normal risk. It is important to have the examination performed at a facility that really knows how to do MRI, that makes a multi-modality approach, and um, who is able to make a biopsy. And now we have data emerging showing that the accumulation of gadolinium in the parts of the brain who have multiple contrast-enhanced MRI studies um, is a problem. But the importance of this finding is unknown and there is still um, no report about cyclic, uh, cyclic gadolinium. A short focus on lobular cancer because this is a problem for mammography and ultrasound and if you look at the sensitivities, the sensitivity in MRI is definitely uh, the best in most of the studies and also the uh, sensitivity for the detection of multifocal or multicentric cancers is better for MRI compared to mammography and ultrasound. But 26 of the suspicious MRI findings are false positive and therefore every diagnosis must be histologically proven before any mastectomy. What do we see here? Big cancer and a smaller cancer. Both are lobular cancers and it's easy to see in the CC, which is the best plane to see lobular cancers. This cancer uh, on the right hand side, there's no cancer seen on the left hand side. Ultrasound typical for the left, right hand side, no uh, cancer detection at the first ultrasound examination. But then the lady came to me and it was easy to see there is also a second cancer. Here are the histologies on the right hand side, a bifocal lobule and NOS cancer, and on the left hand side, 
it was a lobular invasive cancer. Where do we stand with preoperative staging? And uh, particularly focus on multifocal lesions and DCIS. And we know that the addition of MRI to conventional imaging did not reduce the number of additional surgical interventions, repeat lumpectomies or mastectomies in several randomized controlled trials. On the other hand, preoperative MRI is therefore currently only indicated in a selection of patients, in general, in patients that show an invasive lobular cancer, a discrepancy in lesion size of more than one centimeter between mammography and ultrasound, and if there is a eligibility for partial breast irradiation. And here we have a lady that has a multifocal lobular cancer that extends to um, several quadrants, so there's no question, this is no indication for an intraoperative irradiation. Very tricky case. It was easy to find this cancer in NOS. But MRI showed another focus at 6 o'clock, and this focus we did not find in ultrasound. We did not see it in mammography. So we performed an MRI-guided uh, marking with a clip, or no, with a, with a wire, and now we see this is our second focus. Would you expand a malignant diagnosis? Yes, we expect it because there were only two small enhancing nodules, and here you see it, and both are T1A NOS, also the one nearly beneath the breast. Future horizons? There are long-term candidate since years for future horizons. First is spectroscopy showing elevated choline levels or an increase of the um, sodium uh, in the cell due to disruption of the sodium potassium barrier. The second is blood oxygen level dependent contrast function and MRI just detecting oxygenated um, hemoglobin. Uh, which is an indirect sign of a tumor. And there's another very interesting aspect that's high resolution of diffusion weighted imaging. Currently, most uh, systems have just average resoluting or poor resoluting diffusion images, and the future might be a detection without contrast media. I don't believe in this, but you should know that this is based on the lower ADC values of very close uh, uh, together sticking abundant cells. What are the take home messages? First, breast MRI provides the best sensitivity of all breast imaging modalities and is the method of choice in women with familiar breast cancer. Second, gadolinium storage in the brain has enhanced concern on the long term negative gadolinium effects although there is no current evidence of a proven illness. And third, abbreviated MRI is on the horizon as a potential screening tool in women at increased risk, including those with dense breasts. And I thank you very much for your attention.